Hello and welcome to the Idiot Book Nook Podcast. My name is Blazewing, my pronouns are she, her, and they, them. I am the Reading Dragon and my pronouns are she, her. I'm Lady Punnett, my pronouns are primarily she, her, sometimes they, them. Today is a she, they kind of day. And my name is Kritisha, my pronouns are she, they, and today is a pajama day. <laughs> pajama day! We are going through Prospero School of Magic. Today we are doing Chapter 6. Uh, this is written by A.P. Whitfield. If you'd like to follow us on social media, you can do so at lanktr.ee slash idiotbooknook. You'll be able to find all of our links, including our YouTube, uh, the Twitch account, all of our socials. Uh, you'll be able to find everything there. You guys will have to excuse me. I am not going to be reading today because the construction in my building is too loud. So I will be unfortunately out for the next two episodes as the other three take over for me. And I will be back in a bit. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. And there's no point in detracting from the reading experience here. So just bear with me uh, as the other three take over. With that being said, are you guys ready? Oh, oh there's the issues. Oh, Did Blaze Wing freeze? On Blaze's hand, oh. I will remind you guys that I need her screen to be able to read. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just watching the live. Can you guys right hear now. me? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Am I still frozen? Yeah. Oh. Not, not anymore, no. No, you're not frozen anymore. Oof. With that being said, are you guys ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Alright. Narrator, I'm going to mute myself. Please okay. take it away. I'm going to mute myself as well because my background noise is being obnoxious this morning. Unless you can't hear any of my background noise. I can't hear anything. I hadn't noticed anything. Really? You didn't hear the... Nope. Cool. Nope. Prospero School of Magic, The Return of Merlin, Book One. Trigger warning. This book contains situations and scenes that may cause people to become triggered. These include, but are not limited to, sexual assault, rape, drugs, drinking, blood, gore, murder, and abuse. Listener's discretion is advised. Chapter Six. Daniel and Argon made it to the temple that was well preserved in a cave underground. It stood frozen in time from everything around it. The sounds of rushing water could be heard from a waterfall at the entrance of the cave. Rushing water echoed in the cave around them. It was damp, and the wind blew in ascending water droplets to dampen them and send chills all over. Daniel waved his hand without muttering even a spell, and the torches around the tomb lit up to show the rich Roman architecture of the tomb. The old wizard held up the amulet, and looked at the tomb doors that had a round cutout slot that matched that of the amulet. So who wants to take over for Argon today? Uh, I think I've always been Argon. <clears throat> yep, okay. you, she's always been Argon, and you've been uh, Citrine. Yep, and then in this case, I'm also Daniel. Mm -hmm. Well, you've always been Daniel. You guys stop making me laugh. <laughs> so, the amulet is the key. Do you have the spell, Merlin? Argon asked. Of course I do. I created it. Daniel scowls in a show of insult. Sorry. Argon held his hands up in defeat before the old wizard lost his temper. It's fine. Just stand there and shut up while I work. Daniel ordered. He walked over to the tomb and inserted the amulet into the slot that was made for it. He did not say any words aloud. <coughs> he would never share that information and everything else that he knew. He was full of secrets. It left Argon wondering what else Merlin was hiding. Little did the old monarch know that he would wound up in unearthing more than he would be bargaining for later that would change everything. Shaking his head, Argon came back to Earth. 
from being lost in thought to see the tomb light up and came back to life. Greenery and flora coated the walls of the cave as gold lightning etched through the tomb as it followed through various paths, lighting it up and spreading. Clicking around, clicking could be heard, and the creaking from old brackets as the doors slowly start to open and fog rolled out and a chilly breeze coated the cave. Agate? Carnelian? Argon called out. Footsteps echoed around them as two figures emerged from inside the tomb. The, the lighting blinded them until their vision seemed to adjust back into view. They were still dressed in their clothing they were sealed away in. They looked as if they were ready to go LARPing. Agate was still in his armor while Argon's, with Argon's kingdom crest on it in a forest green with gold trees on it. His black hair was pulled into a ponytail and his pale skin showed lack of sunlight. His dark eyes landed on Argon and they lit up at the sight of his king. Carnelian's dark ha hair was braided to the side and even with a lack of sunlight, her skin was still a dark tan. She was in dark Dorin. Dark Dorin? Dorin. What color is Dorin? in a dark Dorin dress trimmed in gold. It was fitted around her waist and flowed to the ground. Her caramel-colored eyes softened at the sight of the two. Hold on, Dagon's looking up what Dorin means. It could also be a typo. Because it's a capital I, so my guess is it's a portent yeah. thing. Yeah, at first I thought it was more like a style of dress. Maybe? Yeah, it is coming up as a style of dress. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who wants to take uh, Carnelian? Uh, let's see here. Do you want to do Carnelian's voice, Critter? Uh, if you want to keep working on your male voices, then I can take Carnelian and you can take Agate. Okay. Because it looks like Carnelian is first up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Give me a second. Weird. This just gives me a moment to share what I found on Doreen dresses. Right. I just needed to pop my back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Your Majesty. Carnelian said softly in a breathless voice. How did we get out? Agate walked forward and gave a bow to his king. Now it's Daniel. That would be because of me. I am sure both of you remember me. Uh... Daniel gave him a slight nod from where he was standing with his arms crossed over his chest. M M Merlin? What year is this? Carnelian looked the two over and noticed the change in clothing. October 20th, 2020. And yes. Daniel smirked slightly at the shocked look on both of their faces. Surprise, Pikachu face. For those who cannot see, due to this being a podcast, Reading Dragon did the shocked Pikachu face. <gasps> Along with Critter. And it's Agate's turn. Uh, how are you? Uh, how are you alive? And... How do you still look so young? Agate was dumbfounded. They both were. I call it the Phoenix Effect. This way, I am able to come back. I never fully die. And when I do, I always seem to come back. In some cases, I am able to heal myself and not have to completely start over in a sense. I have never went from being a baby to this and I've never went from being a baby. No, 
this is the youngest I've actually managed to come back. And that was going back to being eight years old. But mostly, each life always does stay the same. It just really depends on how bad my injuries are and how I came about getting them. Daniel replied and let out a heavy sigh while running his fingers through his hair. Daniel was about to say more when the feel of the ground started to rumble around the four of around the four, each of them looking at each other. They all had the same confused look, but they could all feel the negative energy that was to come. They did not know what it was, but they knew that it was going to bring nothing but trouble, and trouble was something that they had hoped to avoid. But it seemed that it was going to be the case when whatever else was coming was not going to bring anything but destruction and death. I take it you all felt that as well. Daniel let his eyes linger over them. It seems we have unwanted company. That has somehow been let out. Still have no earthly idea as to how you and Citrine got out, but whatever caused it has seemed to also start to let something else out. But now, I think it is fully out. It was, if it was not already. Where is Citrine? What are we up against? Carnelian asked. Citrine is with her daughter. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's, Ar Argon. that's Argon. <clears throat> Citrine is with her daughters, but she might be back at the castle now. We can go and get you both changed. We have much to catch you up on. We do not know what is out there or what is coming. I do fear, though, what and whom it could be. Argon looked back at Daniel and nods to him. Thank you, Merlin. I owe you for this. So, the kingdom still stands. Agate asked with excitement in his voice. Argon frowns and sighs heavily. No. Citrine and I were sealed away as well. The kingdom fell, but I am taking it back. The castle will stand again, and I am reclaiming my throne in the name of Prinight. Then I will gladly serve by your side again, my lord, if you will have us. I know we failed you before. Agate took a knee and bows his head to the Argon. Yes, we are so sorry. Can you forgive us? Carnelian asked softly with her head hung low in shame. Daniel watched the exchange between the three in silence. During that time, he took the chance to poke into their thoughts and memories that led them to be sealed away. Both of their minds were flooded with emotions from the past. He started to uncover the truth. Carnelian had fallen in love with Donatello. Argon's sergeant for his army. Carnelian and Donatello had an affair, and Agate, her betrothed, found out. Anger and abuse sprung up in their relationship, and Agate went off the rails. Carnelian lived in fear of the wind element, but she still would sneak around to be able to see Donatello, but her doing that only seemed to anger Agate more. Carnelian told Donatello what he had to do, and that was to steal her and Agate away so he could not hurt anyone again. So the young ma male did. He went to Merlin for his help, and in doing that, he heartbreakingly sealed his lover away with her abuser. Daniel was both surprised and not surprised by this. He had heard of how Agate had gotten, but never understood why until now. Agate and Carnelian had an arranged marriage. She never loved Agate, but he did love her. His anger and jealousy were what drove him to become a monster, like it did to Argon. Oof. Of course. That is why I asked Merlin to release you both. I need you both by my side, like so long ago. My kingdom would not be the same without you, to help me rule. Argon gave them both a gentle smile as he held his hands out to Agate for Agate to take. 
<coughs> Stand. There is no need to kneel down before me. Agate looked up at the male and took his hand, took his hand getting to his feet. Thank you, your majesty. You have always been so kind and forgiving. Not always. I lost my way as well, and that is how I lost everything. Now I will work to get back what I lost. Argon placed a hand on Agate's shoulder. Let us go home. I trust I will see you again, Merlin. Of course you will. With what is coming, I assume we will. I will do some investigation into what is causing the tremors. I fear I might know who has been released. Daniel rubs his chin in thought. Who? Carnelian asked. Erisus. Daniel replied in an icy voice. The cave fell silent with a cold chill from just the mention of the elemental demon's name. The silence was almost suffocating in the cave until someone finally spoke. Arasis? For how? He was sealed away. We helped him seal him away. Carnelian whimpered and hugged herself. I hope you're wrong. Agate moved to wrap his arm around her, but stopped himself and lowered his arm down to his side. He frowned and opted for twiddling his own fingers with one another. I agree. To think he could be back is rather troublesome. No one would be safe. I know there is still trouble and crime without him, but he is the one man that can bring hell on earth for us all. But we all know I am never wrong. Daniel watched them closely. The worry and anxiety coated each of them in their own way. Carnelian was shivering in fear to the point that silent tears stained her dark skin. Agate held a worried look for Carnelian from where he stood, but his fear for what was to come was evident. Argon held a cold, serious look. He wanted the demon. He hated him with a passion, and to think he had come back made him even more angry. His eyes flashed a shade of red before returning to the light blue that they had been. I will fix this, and I will seal him back. If he is back, that means the, is that a T or an L? The lemur? It's an L. Okay. Delamar. Delamar, Mortem, and Karis will be back as well. I want them gone more than any of you. What happened while we were gone? I get asked. He noticed the anger that radiated off the old wizard and it sent chills down his spine. Daniel shot him a look, then let out a heavy sigh. It is easier to just show you all, but we might as well wait till Citrine is with you all. Otherwise, it will be a repeat of everything I will be showing you. Then you should leave now for the castle. A Argon made a simple flick of his wrist and a portal opened with ease. Back to Prenite. He nods for them to follow him through the portal that led to the throne room of the castle. Agat and Carnelian looked around the vast space that they used to walk through so long ago. To them, nothing was out of place and stayed looking the same, but after replaying Argon's words, they both remembered that their king had the castle rebuilt from the rubble that it had fallen to. Heels, e heels echoed in the halls that were running closer to them until they stopped. Agate, Carnelian, oh, thank Neptune, Argon got you. The dream paused, her eyes widened at the sight of Daniel. Merlin. She breathed out as she looked him over and a blush tinted her cheeks. You, you are alive. How? I will explain everything here soon. Daniel smirked at her pink cheeks that seemed to only darken. Anyways, get comfortable. This is a long story. Citrine hugged Carnelian tightly, and they pulled apart from one another, smiling brightly. 
Carnelian was taller than Citrine. She was six five. She was five six, whereas Citrine was five two. Agate was standing next to was six foot standing next to Daniel, who was only five ten. Still, Daniel always liked. Still, Daniel always had girls spawning over him, and he gave little to no effort in trying to attract the lingering eyes. Oh, how I've missed you all so much. This is wonderful. Argon, we can have a ball again. Citrine said excitedly. Uh, what, what story? She asked, suddenly realizing what Daniel had said. Allow me to show you all rather than tell you the story verbally. Daniel allowed the torches to blow out and the room go dark as mist fell over well of visual image cast over them one of the blank walls the image started to play out like movie clips just like before he showed them everything from his life as a child and his parents trying to kill him by burning him at the stake that left citrine and carnelian sobbing at the sight and the sounds of his screams from and how he tried to muffle them the flashbacks played on one after the other from all the good and the bad every happy moment he had with morgana and arthur but a lot of it was filled with morgana it was clear that he was hiding a lot of memories and only showing them what he wanted. Memory after memory played back like earlier that day when he showed the others in the hospital wing of the private school. Everything held up to the last December he held Morgana in his arms and had kissed her stomach to talk to his unborn child. The love and excitement were both in their eyes and faces only showed more and only made the next events more heartbreaking. The joy and happiness on the other's face in the room soon came to a crashing end at what they were seeing, which was a mix of his memories and the memories he learned from Clara earlier. Horrified screams from the girls that made them hide their faces in either Argon or Agate's chest at the sight of the hell him and Morgana were put through. Tears stung all the men's faces as the girls sobbed heavily at the sight of the dying child in the basket clinging to fight for life and Merlin fighting to get free to try and save his baby while his lover's head laid in the basket. Things slowly faded away after he finished showing them everything he needed to show them. The torches became lit again, and darkness lifted from the room. All that could be heard was Carnelian and Citrine sobs. They stood silently with emotions of mixed sadness and anger. Daniel let out a shaky breath and cleared his throat while he tried to shake off the image of his dead child and lover. Now, you all know, they took everything from me. Everything. I was so... They... He ran his fingers through his hair and closed his eyes as he tried to calm himself. I am going to rip those damn demons apart. Argon growled, his blue eyes replaced by the angry, vengeful red ones. Just... how... how... how can anyone do that? Do that to... to a woman and her baby? Titrine choked out through heavy sobs that she tried to control, while Argon held her in his arms. <clears throat> Daniel finally opened his eyes to look at the angry, sad, tear-stained faces that were in front of him. I am sorry. It was not a happy ending, but Morgana is back. She was reincarnated into another. Her name is now Clara Cameron. Her brother is Sebastian Cameron, and they are descendants of Donatello Cameron. I'm sure you all remember him. Sebastian favors him greatly. So you can have your start over with her? Cornelian questions. No. She is in an arranged marriage with a Wesley Lafayette, with a Wesley Lafayette, next in line to be King of Norway. So it seems even in this life, I do not get the girl. <laughs> Daniel laughed sadly to himself. I 
was dating her, but her family is rather strict on keeping it pure blood and old money in power. <laughs> Even after all these years, those ways have never changed. I was a peasant and servant then, and even now I come from a middle-class family. He says in a soft, sad voice. Oh, Marlan. Citrine whispers sadly as one of her hands rested against her lips. It's fine. She remembers her past life, though. She loved me then, and loves me now, but once again, something stands in our way. Back then, it was Uther until he died. Daniel rubbed his eyes that stung with tears. I should go. I have work to do. Merlin, you, you do not have to go. At least let one of us go with you to help you find what is going on and, and coming for us. It would be better that way. Perneleon touched his shoulder gently. You do not have to go at this alone. You have us here. Right. Um, okay, fine. Who is coming back to the school with me then? So we can update those that are now involved. As much as I do not want them to be, but it seems they have found themselves in the middle of all of this. I fear that more and more lives will become involved and blood will be spilt as much as I have prayed for this day to never come again. I would gladly go back to war again, rather than face the wrath that Arasus and his children will bring to this world. No one will be safe. Daniel looked back at them with his blue eyes being cold and serious. I will go with you. I am the king's right hand. I will go and report back with what we find out and face. Agate steps forward and, bow <clears throat> and bows to Daniel. It will be a great honor to serve next to you again, Merlin, like we had done so long ago. Then that settles it. Oh. That's Argon, sorry! Uh, give me a minute. Don't die! No, I'm having some reflux issues. Sorry. Don't die! Then that settles it. Both of you go, and Agate will keep me up to date. We have much to do. Argon says to the two. With that, both Argon and both Agate and Daniel vanish from their sights back to the school. I'm sorry, guys, it's getting really bad. Hey, Critter Stomach, stop trying to acid death her. Daniel. Oh, I missed no, Argon's line first. Oh, yeah. shit. May God be with us all. Argon whispers as he looks at the spot where the two had stood. Daniel. Clara breathes out as she saw him come back. She quickly ran to him and flung her arms around him. She wrapped his, he wrapped his arms around her small frame and nuzzled into her blonde locks. I was so worried over you. There was another earthquake, a small one, but it still shook the school. The quakes are starting to get worse. They're spreading all over the globe. What is going on? She paused and noticed Agate. Agate? She whispers in surprise. Agate was awestruck at, by the sight of Clara. <laughs> you are as Beautiful as ever, your majesty. Clara gave him a gentle smile. Thank you, and you are still handsome. Daniel rolled his eyes and shot Agate a look. 
Anyways, we fear that Eris is back and his children. Clara froze and her color drained from her face. Wesley was doing his best to ignore the fact that Daniel and Clara were still clinging and holding feelings for one another and disregarding the fact she was betrothed to him now. He could not very well blame them considering it was an arranged marriage. I was... Oh yeah, uh, Blaze was doing Wesley. I can take care of Wesley. Eris's and his children. The ones you just showed us not even an hour ago. Yes, we do not know how they have gotten free from their imprisonment, but they have. Now, the trouble will be to find them and to seal them away again. Daniel held Clara in his arms where she rested her head on his shoulders and shivered at the thought of them, be of them being back. Uh, how can we help? Sebastian asked, from where he was, now standing at this point. You said Donatello was able to seal immortals away. Then let me help do that. Let me continue on what he was doing back then. Daniel did not want any of them involved, but he knew good and well Sebastian was not going to sit aside and do nothing if it meant to stand and fight for what was right. He was like Donatello in that way. It must be a Cameron. It must be the Cameron in him. Fine. Yes. That would be of some help. Oh god, Chester. Okay, now remember. Um... Remember how to do the accent. It's not it's, Australian. It's Scottish, I know. You can count the rest of us in to help you do... Bleh. You can count the rest of us in to help you do what we can as well. Chester placed a hand on Sebastian's shoulder. None of you are going to go into this alone. This I will not be easy. And it will be dangerous. We need to secure the school and its wards. I get chimes in and steps forward more. I can work on that now by placing a barrier over the property. Yes, please do that now. Nodding to him, he vanished from sight out to set out from sight to set out on securing the school. Silence fell over the room as Daniel says to the wind element. Daniel says to the wind element. Nodding to him, he vanished from sight to set out on securing the school. Silence fell over the room as everyone stood in their own thoughts of what was to come. After being showed the damage and just how graphic and horrific it all was, they were nowhere near ready to face what was coming, but they we're going to have to no choice but to do it. If not, the number of deaths was just going to grow. The first order of business was going to be tracking where the, those demons are and what they were currently doing. Daniel had a good idea on both, but he was honestly scared to go out and find out in fear of what was going to happen. The last time was something he would never forget and was scarred in his mind permanently. A shiver went down his spine, making him hold Clara to him a bit tighter in fear of letting her go and her facing the same fate she had faced so long ago. He could not stand the thought of that. He had failed Morgana and his child. He blamed himself for his mur for her murder and the hell she was put through. I will not let them touch you again. I swear it. Daniel whispers into her hair. Agate took his place back in the hospital wing and stood with his arms behind him. It has been done. The school will be safe for now. I do not know for how long, but it should stay. I can reinforce it. Thank you, Agate. Daniel replied. Now then, none of you have actually eaten, so let us go to the cafeteria so you can all eat. What about your father? Daniel, Kalara looked up and let her blue eyes lock onto his. <clears throat> I will handle him. Do not worry, my dear. 
Daniel kissed her forehead, then took her hand in his. He better take care of him. Jenna and Sally looked at one another sadly. It seemed like it was one bad thing after another. They both held the same look of fear on what was to come and what everyone's fate would be. Jenna and Sally. I think I was Jenna. And I think she had a British accent. I, I think so. Come on, my love. Let's go join them and eat. Jenna stood up. <coughs> Jenna stands up and takes her hand into hers to follow the others out the door. Sebastian sat on the bed and looked over at the nurse, who had been listening and watching. She said nothing, but her eyes held worry for everyone. Can I go? He asked her, and she returns his question with a nod. Thank you. He got back to his feet and looked down to see Lilith tugging at his hand to where his mom waited at the door. Seeing as you are doing much better, I should get back to the office and save your father from the mound of cases of paperwork that's piling up by the seconds. Anastasia laughed softly. Look after your sisters. I will call you later to check on you. She kissed her son's cheek and kissed the top of Wolf's head. I love all my babies, and I'm so proud of all of you. Do not be mad with your father. He is trying to do the right thing for everyone, and in time you will understand it. She cupped Sebastian's cheek and looked into his blue eyes, then brushed his shaggy golden locks behind his ear. You favor so much of your father from when he was a young man. Letting out a soft sigh, she pulled away from them. I love you. Oh, wait. Actually, do you want to take uh, Lilith's line? Are you asking me or Paulina? That would be you, Krita. Okay. Um, I'm trying not to hurl. I will take her line then. Okay. I love you, Mommy, Lilith said in a sweet voice as she wrapped her arms around her mother's waist. I will miss you. I will miss you too, little bit. Anastasia hugs her back gently. Of course, I will watch over them, and I love you and father both. Sebastian replies with a sleepy yawn. Just so you know, hospital beds are not comfortable to sleep in. He took Lilith by the hand. Now, let's go feed you. Anastasia giggles and watch them walk away. She left in the opposite direction to walk to her portal she pulled up and stepped through. Sebastian? Lilith looks up at her big brother with worried eyes. Yeah, a little bit. Sebastian looked down at her and frowns at her sad eyes. What can we do to help Clara? She loves Daniel! Lilith said sadly. <sighs> I'm not sure, Lilith. There's not much that we can do. Wesley's a good man, though. She will at least be with someone we know and have always cared for. Sebastian sighs and led them over to one of the big round tables that the group found themselves sitting at. His eyes rested on Clara, who was resting her head on Daniel's shoulder. His heart tightened over her and how unfair it all was, but it was something that had been tradition even when Merlin was Arthur's royal wizard. Jenna. See. A voice broke Sebastian's train of thought. He looked away from the couple to lock his blue eyes on a pair of brown ones. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Jenna. Sebastian took the teacup from her and added honey to his tea. Of course. She leans in to whisper to him. Don't worry. Everything will be okay. Sebastian offers her a sad smile. I know. I just can't help but worry. Wesley investigated his teacup, peering into the dark liquid as the cafeteria came to life with chatter. The small talk at the table he sat at caught little of his attention. He glanced up and looked over at Clara. They locked eyes for a moment in a soft blush, 
danced on her cheeks that made him smile shyly and look away. He let out a sigh, then took a sip of tea. Catching a glance, he watched Romeo walk over to Daniel and whispered something in his ear. Arching his brow with the odd behavior, he watched Daniel get up to follow Romeo out of the cafeteria. That is odd. I thought those two hated each other. No, he hates you. He dislikes Romeo. Chester comments with a chuckle. Shush, I'm bad at Scottish. Oh, Chester, hush. He does not. Clara watched Chester arch a brow at her argument. Hush. Chester chuckles at her expression. You know it's true. Wesley shakes his head and lets out a heavy sigh. Of course, I figured as much. Outside, Clara looked back at the door the boys left out of. I do wonder what they were talking about. Outside, Daniel walked alongside Romeo. They were silent for a moment until Daniel decided to first to be the first to speak. So, what is it that you need to talk about that was so important? You still look the same, Merlin. It seems I have changed like I always do in every life. I am not sure what brought on me getting my memories of who I was back, but uh, I am back, Merlin. It's me, Marlon. Arthur. Romeo chuckled and watched Daniel's expression change from a serious expression to that of delight. I Arthur. fucking knew it! I knew it! We called it. Hell. Arthur. Daniel stops, placing his hand on Romeo's shoulder as he smiled brightly thus ending chapter six Woo! romeo the chat is arthur because arthur is a chat with that that brings us to the end of this episode um I want to thank you guys for joining us and let you know that we'll be back next episode with our discussion portion as seems to be the pattern for this book um, not really much else to say, so thank you for joining us and for the idiot book nook. Oh wait, actually before I get into that, if you'd like to follow us on socials, you can do so at l-a-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash idiot book nook. Thank you for joining us. And for the idiot book nook, I'm Blazeming. I am the Reading Dragon. I'm Lady Punnett. I'm pretty shy. That... Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> Stop <laughs> trying to throw up. <laughs> oh, and we'll see you guys next episode.